Let's get going with the program. Uh, the first case would be of a 56-year-old female housewife, right shoulder, pain, right shoulder pain, fall at home six months back, unable to lift her shoulder, pain on sleeping. Clinical examination, empty can positive, external rotation, abduction painful and restricted. She had mildly positive drop arm, which is not probably very significant. Acromhumeral distance was about 9 mm. And uh, on MRI, we had a patted stage of uh, two with the mild retraction of the supraspinatus, a complete supraspinatus tear, fatty infiltration, gutlier stage two, I would say. And uh, management here would be uh, double row rotator cuff repair, uh, plus or minus a biceps SCR. Uh, so over to Dr. Shreyas, and I would request the moderators, Dr. Prashant, uh, Dr. Mohan, to kindly come onto the stage. Dr. Satak, uh, and moderate the session. A question is for the delegates, questions could be asked through your app. Uh, moderators would receive that and they would convey those uh, questions uh, which are relevant. So let's get going with the day. Uh, good day to all of you and uh, uh, let's have it a uh, good fruitful day ahead. Over to Dr. Shreyas. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. This is Dr. Prashant. Yes. Can you are loud Prashant? and clear. We have picture outside of the okay. shoulder. Great. And what about the arthroscopic image? Yeah, we are able to see that as well. Fantastic. So you got the history. Uh, I just started 10 minutes ago. I've got, visualized the glenohumeral joint. So I'll just go back in a second because uh, the patient has a small uh, upper surface subscapularis tear so I'm just going to repair it so we've just come to the acromial space so I'll go back to the glenohumeral um, so you are in the beach chair sir I am in the beach chair I do all my shoulder arthroscopies in beach chair uh, interscalene block and uh, hypotensive anesthesia so far it's been excellent so I'll go back to the glenohumeral joint I use a traction device in this case the trimano uh, I think it's important to have a traction device whether you do beach chair or lateral position. Makes the job easy. Otherwise, the assistant has to hold arm. So, have you got the glenohumeral image? Yeah. Okay. So, um, the apart from, uh, so the biceps was, uh, I'll, I'll talk you through a diagnostic round quickly. So, the biceps was fine. Then, uh, the superior labrum was just a little bit of fraying. So, we have smoothened that. Glenohumeral joint uh, is unremarkable. As I mentioned, there is a superficial uh, tear of the upper third of the subscap, as you can see here, you know, this part. So we are just going to repair it with a, a knotless anchor. So I've just passed the tape. I use a bird beak to uh, pass the tape. It's important to clear the rotator interval, uh, uh, you know, to ensure uh, proper suture management. So we've passed that. Now we are going to use the, so I'm going to use a 4.75 biosphere lock anchor. So we have prepared the bony bed for the uh, reattachment and uh, we have a dedicated uh, uh, tap for it. And as you can see, the first FT is for the uh, biocox screw and the second one is for the swivel lock. So one should just ensure that that uh, SL alphabet is buried inside. So we've kind of done that. And then I'm going to now, uh, if you have the outside image, have you got it? Yeah, we are able to see the outside. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, use the uh, uh, biocomposite 4.75 uh, swivel lock anchor, uh, you know, which is the workhorse for my uh, rotator cuff surgeries. It's got a peak eyelet, so we're just uh, delivering the tape through that. Now, in knotless anchors, one important thing is that you don't want to over constrain. So, uh, what I tend to do a little bit of pass pointing. So, you know, you have a little bit of slack before you insert insert the anchor into the desired area as seen here. So the swivel lock anchor, for those who don't know, you have to tap it till the uh, screw tip reaches the bone, the laser mark, as you can see here. And then you uh, rotate it clockwise, holding the thumb pad. As uh, if you have the outside image, then you will get that information. Yeah, we are able to see both, sir.
and uh, the uh, sleeve of the anchor decides the depth. So, you know, we have reached that and then you can uh, uh, do the counterclock movement of the thumb pad to ensure that your uh, anchor is flush. You don't want to go too much deep because you want to purchase in the cortical bone. So it's flush. So I'm just going to now remove the inserter handle. Uh, so, so your anchor is coming through which portal? The uh, anterior inferior portal. So we have removed the eyelet uh, suture. Can I have the tape cutter, please? On a yeah, tape cutter. Thank you. With the, if you put the pad, please. So from below up, yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. So we now we're just going to cut the excess part of the tapes. If you have the outside image. Okay, so we'll now just show you the repair part, uh, outside image. So, you know, we, we've got this repair, we have kind of uh, covered that tone part. Now we're going to externally rotate if you have the outside image to ensure that we have not over constrained the external rotation. So you see here, she's got her full external rotation as before. Yeah. So we've not gone too tight. So this completes the subscribe repair part. Can you straighten it, Ruth? And uh, on the, um, the cuff side, there was a tear. So can you abduct the, yeah, that's it. So if you hold the probe, please. So you see here, uh, this is a tear um, out here. So what we have done is we've just created a, a anterior lateral portal. So if I come in with the probe, can you look at please? You can, you can see that this is a tear. So we are going to go to the acromial side. I've just done a preparation of the tuberosity with burring. It's important to be judicious to not take away the bone because it's a good part. So that's the vision of the, of the tear. Um, so and I'll go do, to the acromial side now. Do you do anything to mark the point so that it's If it's full thickness, I don't. If it is partial, then yes. I use a, a 16 gauge Venflon to just mark that area. So now I'm in the subacromial space. Now we're just going to do the burr, please. The, uh, so, you know, whether to do acromioplasty, not to do, uh, is questionable. My reason is to just, uh, sorry, before that, RF, please. Uh, my reason is to just create a bleeding uh, area for the tendon healing. So my RF is coming through the anterior lateral portal. So what are your landmarks uh, inside the subacromial space to orient yourself? So the first thing I do when I enter is to see a white glistening uh, surface superiorly. And that uh, I know is the periosteum on the undersurface of the acromion. Um, and obviously, when you insert the trocar, you want to have a feel that you are under the bone, so you don't uh, go above it. And uh, the uh, CA ligament, uh, you know, unless it's uh, massive tears, I release the CA ligament both anteriorly and laterally, as you can see here, until the deltoid fibers are seen. So now I'll just use the burr to do a, a, a very uh, thin acromioplasty. So what percentage of your cases do you uh, need to do acromioplasty? Uh, unless it's a massive uh, tear uh, where the CA arch uh, should be retained to prevent the anterior superior escape, I do it. As I said, very little. Uh, if there is an overhang of the uh, anterior part, then I will just uh, kind of take it off to prevent any impingement as seen here. So any evidence of coracoid impingement in this patient? No, you, uh, coracoid impingement is generally for large tears, you know, not for this superficial tear near the lesser tuberosity. 
Okay, so once I do that, uh, Vicinja Rod, please, I tend to change the viewing portal. So from posterior viewing, I'm now going to go to um, anterior lateral viewing portal. Can you take this behind, please, Peter? Okay, sister, he has to come here. Sister, just come here, please. Yeah, that's it. So now we are going to the anterior lateral viewing portal. Can I have the RF, please? Pouch, dekho, Rohit. a good field so far, good anesthesia, which is extremely important. And we are using a pump as well. And we have the 4K system here for a good quality vision. So you can see the cuff tear slowly coming in the picture. So I'll just clear the bursa a little bit. Then I'll complete my acromioplasty. Do you have any end point? Hi, this is Dr. Sarthak here. Yes. So like, do you have any end point like till when uh, you have to do a bursectomy like you have in... Yeah, I need to visualize the cuff properly. And do you uh, check it along while pulling the cuff? Like, was it? Yeah, I, I just need to ensure that I have a good vision uh, from anterior to posterior, medial to lateral, to be able to repair it. And that's enough for me. I don't do excessive bursectomy uh, unless it really, you know, it comes in my way. So I'm just clearing the subdeltoid space here, as you can appreciate. Okay, can I have the burr, please, sister? Just uh, one second. Uh, just put this back. Yeah, the burr will come from here. Yeah, thank you. So, cutting block technique where you just kind of take away a bit of the, so the tip for uh, beginners is that you kind of start the burr first and then you go in contact with the, with the bone and uh, just take a little bit off. The idea is to have a flat uh, surface and take the anterior lateral edge to prevent any impingement. Any questions from the audience, you can send it on the app so that we can uh, transmit it to Dr. Gujjar. So I think uh, this is good enough for me. Uh, and now I'll proceed to the cuff repair. So Rohit Pakadu, please go. go. So yeah, so that's, that's the tear here. Sister, can we put a shaver blade, please? Yeah. And, uh, okay. One second. So I'm just clearing the bursa off.
शेवल ब्लेड का डायरेक्शन देखो ब्लेड किधर है होल्ड दिस प्लीज होल्ड द कैमरा सिस्टर टेन द ब्लेड माउथ टूवर्ड्स द या थैंक यू when one uses the shaver there will be a bit of bleeding so that is expected but i think it helps me uh, so this is a torpedo shaver blade which is a non aggressive blade uh, it helps me take away just the bursal tissue without damaging the cuff find it quite useful uh, for rotator cuff surgery so you know the tear is slowly coming in our vision Okay, can I have the RF, please? You can put it back there. Thank you, sister. Uh, so basically, you view from the lateral portal and work through the posterior portal. Yeah, if I once I have to repair the cuff, I uh, have a viewing portal laterally, and no, I'll work from the anterior lateral and the posterior lateral portal, depending on the uh, you know, the the pattern of the tear. no i think this is quite uh, a very good thing what you are doing because sometimes we fail when we keep our uh, like you know viewing portal through the posterior and try to clear the posterior side yeah But now keeping it through the anterior lateral portal and cleaning it from the posterior portal is is very nice thank you yeah that's good there is always a bleeder here at the back yeah, so we just need to make sure we have a good vision hemostasis so will you be making another posterior lateral portal to change the so scope I'll be or will it be lateral i'll be making a lateral portal okay to decide whether i need a so when i do a double row i need a posterior lateral additional portal right. and if i end up doing a single row then i don't need that unless for suture management or passage okay uh, sister can we change places you come on this side he will go on that side the trolley will come with you so can i have a uh, when you are ready yeah sister you come here please and you come here that's it thank you yeah uh, can i have the venflon please so i'm going to make my uh, mid lateral portal i don't know if you have the outside image i have done the surface marking which is very important so Okay, knife, please. Thank you. Perfect. Now, please take this off. Thank you. So, would you say that will be about two finger breadths below the lateral margin yes, of the acromion? Yes, absolutely. Are you right? So, you prefer to keep your uh, monitor at the foot end of the table, is it? Uh, yeah. I uh, in my uh, OT at Kokila Bin, I also have a uh, a viewing screen uh, where the curtain is. So you know, for my assistant, they can look uh, straight. They don't have to turn to the right shoulder. For me, I am quite uh, used to this. So it's just surgeon preference, you know. I I don't think there are hard and fast rules. Absolutely. So yeah. So I'm just clearing the footprint to determine the type of repair. this seems to be a, a a small tear you know i don't think this will be a double row type of repair um so your thoughts on uh, using knotless anchors or yeah I, i i've been using knotless anchors for a couple of years now i'm quite happy with it uh, 
um, you know, just uh, so apart from the uh, issues with uh, uh, not slippage, loop security, prominence, uh, I find it quite easy. The only uh, kind of challenging part for anybody who uses is to not to over tighten uh, with the knotless. So, you know, I'll hopefully share a tip how to minimize that. I already did on the subscap side. Right. I'll just try and do that on this side. So, so can if I have a bar, please, bar? Sorry. If you're using a double row repair, yeah. you would still use a knotless anchor on the medial side? Uh, knotless anchor on the medial, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, it depends what, what you are comfortable with, what is the budget for the surgery. But I, I do the speed bridge, uh, you know, technique. So I use the knotless medially and laterally. Sir, this is Dr. Mohan here. Uh, is there yeah. any delamination, sir? So karna hai. Delamination of the tear? Kar sakte na. Uh, just one second. Huh? So I'm just trying to figure out whether I should do a speed bridge or uh, or not. So just one second. Huh? I'll, I'll just answer that question. Just give me a second. So that I can get the inventory ready. So maybe I, I might be able to just get away with a speed bridge. So we'll just have a look and I'll answer about the delamination. Huh? Just give me a second. I mean, you can do a single row here, but I'm just, uh, you know, for demonstration purposes. And also this is a small to medium. So, you know, you can argue single row, double row. But for demonstration, I'm just going to do a double row because I think I have a space. So, uh, uh, Mukesh, uh, uh, scorpion needle or speed bridge kit. Khonna. For the delegates, you know, this Shiver, please, right. the anchor which he's going to use now, the swivel lock, is quite yes, sir, a simplified please, anchor. Ab like needle de do. When you uh, have not a good uh, partner to assist you, I think this is one of the best anchor when you are starting your career. Is, you, yeah, you can. Akshay, do you mind just holding this, the pouch? With, yeah, that's it. Sister, you can just take the trolley behind. Just watch this guy. Yeah, that's it. So the delamination part, no, I'll just answer that. Um, this, uh, can you hold the shaver, please, Akshay? So what we are going to check is, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's important to just clear the... Uh, irregular edges of the cuff to ensure uh, a smooth area of contact on the cuff footprint as you see here. I don't see a delamination here. It is just that this is the medial part, this is the lateral part. That's it. There's no delamination. Okay. So does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. Uh, so Great. another so question we prepared is, the, yeah. uh, how do you determine the shape of the tear, whether it's a U tear or a so tear? Can I have a suture retriever, please? determine on vision so you know here you can see this is like a uh, like a c or a u shaped tear and i use a atraumatic uh, tissue grasper to ensure so this is the reduction we are looking at back on the footprint so it's looking nice um, just can i have the rf please update so i'm just preparing the tuberosity for uh, laterally for my uh, double row Just load it on the golden handle, please. I'll tell you when I need it. So one tip is that uh, while you are preparing the cuff uh, area, don't use the cannula. I mean, you can, uh, you may not use the cannula throughout your procedure, but just for suture management, I tend to use. But if you put the cannula beforehand, it restricts the mobility of the instruments. Uh, medial-laterally or anterior-posteriorly. So try not to use the cannula, just use your portal to prepare the cuff uh, tear. And then once when you are ready to start your suture uh, passage and uh, you know uh, tying or fixation, then you can uh, use a cannula. Uh, but, but do you recommend the passport cannula over here? Anything. Yeah. I use the triple dam, but passport is also good. 
And I'll again tell you why I use the triple dam. Uh, I'll demonstrate the reason for it. But what you need is a clear uh, cannula, you know. So you can see your sutures as you kind of pass it through the cuff, as you tie it. You just need a transparent cannula rather than an opaque one. There's some bleeding. Uh, I'll just try and control. Okay, so uh, we are ready for the bur burr, please. Can I just have the burr? I'm just going to prepare the tuberosity laterally a little bit. I've already prepared medially, as you can see. A uh, good way to ensure that you don't take away too much bone while preparing the tuberosity. Clean Can we clean this, please? No, just uh, clean. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, is to use the uh, burr in the reverse mode, not the forward mode. And just uh, kind of keep moving, don't stay still, otherwise it will dig into the bone. So just keep moving, ensure that you have uh, taken this uh, uh, soft tissue away and that's more than enough, you know. Because the anchors are vented, so you will have a good uh, bleeding from there. So I'm using the uh, burr in a reverse mode on the foot pedal, just to you know prepare the tuberosity footprint. So that's enough. Um, I wish I can just stop that little ooze on and off. So we have a clear picture. Okay, can uh, can we have a triple dam, please? So Vicinja rod first. And the triple dam, please. Uh, camera pakadi. Yeah. Hold the pouch, please, sister. Thank you. Just hold it a pouch. Huh? Don't let go. So we are passing the triple dam cannula, as you can see here. Uh, again, one tip is, so I'm going to use the scorpion uh, self-retrieving suture device. So you have to keep the cannula very close to the lateral part. Otherwise, it will not allow the instrument to be maneuvered. So now, can I have the needle, please? So now, anchor uh, insertion, needle, yeah. So uh, if you have the outside image, go flush with the lateral part. And you can see uh, this is a good trajectory. And if anywhere between 45 to 90 is good. So take it off, please. Uh, yeah. Can I have the trocar, please? We have sister Madhuri here who is extremely efficient and fast. I have to match up to her pace. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah. So, sister, can you hammer? Oh, yeah. Akshay, can you hammer? We have Akshay as well, uh, Chirag's fellow. Keep going slowly. So, initially, a few taps to en uh, engage it, and then you can go hard once you have a, depending on the bone quality. So, uh, uh, yeah, slow down, Akshay. As we are coming here, SL, yeah, go down. Slow, slow, go down. We have to bury the alphabets. Keep going. That's it, good. So, the white one, sister, the white tape anchor. So, if you have the outside image, uh, this is a preloaded uh, swivel lock which comes in the kit. So, it's uh, four anchors, uh, two have the tapes which are preloaded and the ends are merged. So, for a tear like this, which is not retracted, you, you can pass it through a single passage. So, uh, yeah, I'll do that. So, give me the hammer. So, we have inserted it. So, again, once the anchor reaches the tip of the bone, hold the thumb pad uh, and then just screw it in till it is flush. Uh, with the bone and uh, here because the tapes are attached to the anchor you have to undo the tapes before you withdraw the thumbs pad uh, to see how much your anchor is flush with the bone um, yeah so yeah and uh, then we just take it off so the, the eyelet suture i will uh, pass it through the cuff so put this down it's still time the eyelet suture uh, will, you know, retain it if I have a retracted cuff and I want to tie medial, uh, you know, anterior to posterior sutures. But here it's not uh, retracted cuff, so I, I, I kind of remove the eyelet suture. And uh, now I'll retrieve the tape through the cannula. Uh, so tape retriever, please. Tape retriever. Thank you. So 
So this is a, a low profile tape retriever. So we retrieve the tapes. Now can I have the scorpion, please? Akshay, do you mind holding this? Thank you. So the, uh, if you can see the outside image, the two uh, tapes are merged. So you know, it just saves a step. So I just like to pass the medial uh, suture at one point rather than two points. Uh, some prefer to do at two separate points. So, you know, you pass the uh, scorpion and uh, posteriorly you don't have the biceps, so you don't need to worry. So you can go freely in and uh, on, the, on the cuff side, we need to be just uh, two millimeters lateral to the muscular tendinous junction. So, you know, I'm just trying to figure that out and I will just be two centimeters lateral to it. Two millimeters rather. Okay, can you hold the cannula please, Akshay? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. Now, uh, one second. Can I have the suture retriever please? So from my posterior portal, I will just retrieve the tapes for better suture management. As you can see, your can camera pocket, please. Good. So both the tapes are passed through the cuff. Likewise, I'll pass the second anchor. Can I have the uh, punch, please? Thank you. So here, uh, I need at least a 1.5 centimeter bridge. So this is good enough. So I will pass it here. Yeah, gentle hammer first. Few taps to engage it, and then yeah. Go please, good. The bone is soft, so go slow please. Go slow. Yeah. Sir, so you're uh, quite happy with uh, one point of fixation through the cuff? Yeah, yeah. It is a uh, very low profile uh, hole. And uh, you know, for these type of tears, uh, one, you know, one point is enough. It's not like a massive retracted tear. So now we are passing the second anchor through. The same again, you know, the, uh, the screw tip has touched the bone, so I don't need to hammer it. I can directly go in because as I said, the bone was a little softer compared to the posterior anchor uh, bone. So again, the same steps, make sure that the sleeve is flush, undo the tapes from the thumb pad. If you have the outside image, you can see it again. This is an excellent uh, anchor for rotator cuffs. You know, uh, it's really the workhorse uh, for uh, rotator cuff surgery. Can I have the hammer please? So now uh, I withdraw the thumb pad. Just one, uh, just one second. Maybe I'll just take one more turn just to, yeah, that's enough. Okay, ha thumb pad, please. Now, when you're removing the thumb pad, keep an eye on that the anchor is not backing out. That's very important. Uh, you know, uh, soft bone, elderly patient. Now, I, I remove this uh, uh, eyelet stitch because I, it's not a retracted tear, so I'm not going to use it to tie my uh, sutures from uh, anterior to posterior medially. So again, tape retriever, I'm getting the tape out. Scorpion needle, please. Akshay, can you hold this, please? Thank you. So here I need to make sure that the biceps is not caught up in the, so you can see the biceps underneath here. So I'll have to go above it. So first I'll just pass the instrument and then have a look. Sometimes the area may be small, so you may not be able to see, but yeah, so the biceps is here. So I'm just going to go above it. Uh, I'm just going to check it again. Uh, just hold this please, sister. Yeah, so I've gone above the biceps. Can you see that? Yes, yes, we can okay, see that. Light shows up, please. Upper, pura, upper, vertical. Okay, so then I'm passing my second tape just in line with the first one. Cannula, hold the cannula, please. Thank you. Can I have the uh, suture retriever, please? So from my anterior portal, the anterior inferior portal, I'll just retrieve these tapes out for suture management. Okay, hold this please, thank you. So just show this. 
So again, we are delivering the tapes through the cuff. Okay, now if you have the outside image knife, please. We are going to cut the two ends of the tail. Cut, please, thank you. Both, both ones, thank you. Because now we need to tie the lateral rows. Yeah. Okay, now can I have the tape retriever, please? So, uh, you know, take one tape. Canula, please, Rohit. Uh, canula, Pukhara, Thakshay. Thank you, sister. Dr. Shayas, yeah. and I considering Proud. this is a small tear, but suppose you have a large tear. Yeah. Like, how do you decide how much anterior you need to go? Do you have anything? No, so, uh, so anteriorly with the tapes, I can only go where my anchor insertion points are. But uh, I use the dog, you can use the dog ear stitch to get an additional purchase. Here, I don't expect any dog ears. So, you know, you see the cuff is sitting nicely here. So I don't expect uh, anything. So now we are going to just uh, pass the tapes, uh, you know, the fix it here. So, uh, so yeah, so the purpose I use the triple dam rather than the passport is I can use the anchor as a reduction tool to see where I want to insert, you know. So this gives me an idea how the reduction is going to be. So I'm happy with that. Uh, whereas with the passport, you can use a, a tape retriever or something. Rohit, you pakadu, please. Punch, please. So Akshay, can you hold this up? with your left hand and hold the pouch with the right. Thank you. So, you know, I'm happy with this uh, insertion point. Just one second. In line with the tape. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll hammer. I'll hammer. Yeah. Okay, sister, you can hammer. Uh, light source, aap ki taraf karo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. L yeah. Okay, hammer, please. Slowly, slowly, please. Very slowly. Slowly. Yeah. The lateral bone is always softer, so we go a bit slow. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, okay, hammer. No, no, it's not over, sister. I want to see the mark. Yeah, slowly, slowly, please, sister, slowly. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Little more, little more, little more. Okay, fine. Can I have the anchor, please? Mosquito, yeah, thank you. So before I remove the uh, punch, I tend to feed the anchor on the tapes. Akshay, can you hold the, the anchor? Yeah, and the cannula, perfect. Don't let go of the cannula. Okay. okay. Now, so now I'll just show you uh, a, a tip for, yeah, hold the cannula. So one way to ensure that you don't lose the hole with the bursa and all, is to re keep the cannula flush with the hole. Okay, but this is a good uh, area to visualize, so I'm not worried. Now, once you pass the eyelet through and it's near the uh, lateral hole, you remove the mosquito uh, for the tapes so that you know you can have a tension-free thing. And wh what you need to do is just come above the hole here, and then my assistant or uh, I will tighten the, uh, you know, pull the tape. So give me one tape at a time. Yeah, just hold on. So, you know, that takes, that's enough so that you don't over tighten the cuff, that's it. And then you bring it down to the hole. So, this is a good uh, way to ensure that, you know, you have not over tightened the lateral row. So, again, I will hammer it till I get the anchor at the tip. Withdraw the thumb sleeve to ensure that it is flush. You don't want to bury it because it's soft bone underneath. So just flush is good enough. Remove the uh, inserter handle. Hammer, please. Hold the cannula. Very good. Again, while removing the inserter to remind you, just ensure that you visualize so that the anchor is not backing out. Okay. Then we re you can use this eyelet stitch for dog ear reduction if you feel so. So I'll just have a look here. So it's fine. There's no dog ears. Hold this, please, Rohit. So I'll remove the eyelet suture. Can I have the tape cutter, please? Thank you. With the tab and the mosquito. Thank you. Yeah. And then you just go flush and you cut the tapes like so. And then we'll put the lateral anchors. Can I have the tape retriever, please, sister? 
Can you please hold the camera gently? Yeah, very good. So now I'll just get these two tapes and do the lateral thing. Can you hold the tape, please? Yeah, fantastic. And then the second one. Okay, and then again to kind of give you an idea, use the cannula as a reduction tool so you know exactly how it is. So this is how the repair is going to look like. Okay, now have the punch, please. Pakro, please, right? Yeah, Pakro, thank you. One second. So, so where is the, yeah. Okay, Gen, uh, gently hammer. So if it's bleeding and you are at a crucial point, you can bring the camera closer so you can not lose the vision. Gently hammer, please, sister. Gently, like before. Sl yeah, very good. Okay, just hold on, stop, please. I want to see my alphabets. Yeah, go on slowly. Slowly, slowly, little more. L yeah, perfect, thank you. Anchor, please. I'll do it, thank you. Chirag is pampered, huh? Okay, hold this, please. Hold the anchor, thank you. Okay. So, I'll just insert this till the eyelet, then remove the mosquito, re relax on the cannula, thank you. Uh, give me, so this, the, the assistant gives me the two sutures and I'll take the slack off, one and then second, like so, and then come down with, let me have a look. So come down on the hole, uh, yeah, come down on the hole. And that's, that's it. So can I have the hammer, please? That's fine. Thank you. One other tip is if you, if you, uh, you know, if you have the cannula here, it may obstruct your vision. So you just withdraw it a little. And so gently tap it, uh, depending on the quality of the bone. And then you screw the anchor in like so. Hold the cannula, please. Again, when you are withdrawing the inserter, keep an eye that the anchor is not backing out. Thank you. Cutter, please. Mosquito. Any questions, Sarthak? Uh, Dr. Shays, yeah. uh, this tear being on either side, close to the biceps tendon, Okay. Uh, you did a subscap partial repair. Yeah. Is there any issues with the biceps? Do you expect post-op? Sorry? Biceps tendon. Yeah. Do you expect any issues post-operatively because the tear on either side of the biceps you have repaired? Either side of any, any, what, do you, what are you saying? Any no. impingement? Uh, no, no. Uh, biceps tendinitis. Okay, just one second. Huh? So, you see this is a uh, speed bridge technique. Can we uh, rotate the sh uh, shoulder internally? So it's good to maneuver and make sure that you have repaired it. So, you know, uh, I'm kind of happy with that repair. You don't want to pull the cuff too laterally because, you know, there is tendon loss. If you see here, the muscle tendon junction starts. So this part, there is tendon loss. If you pull it and lateralize it, you may cause a, you increase the risk of a medial tear. So I'm quite happy with these because these are strong implants. So, you, and, 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 and a degenerate cuff. So this is good enough. Um, I'll just take you through the arthroscopic image. I'll answer your question in a second, yeah? So, we'll go in the glenohumeral joint now. Straight kar do. Can I have a trocar, please? I'll come there, Akshay. Just, you can come there. Uh, shaver dalna hai, Rohit. Okay, in a second. Hold this, please, Akshay. Any questions from the audience? So, uh, yeah, sorry, what was the question on the biceps? What were you saying? Well, since you did a partial repair of the subscap also, yeah. and uh, the cuff supraspant is also anterior portion. Shaver, please. Both are close to the biceps tendon. Ah. So do you expect any tendinitis kind of a thing post op No, no. See, so, so let me finish. I mean, there's a good vision, so I don't need the shaver. See, this is my repair. Can you see the area? Yes. Uh, probe, please. So, you know, we've got the medial part of the cuff back onto the footprint. So, I don't think, see, the biceps is quite far away. I don't see a concern here. And I'll just uh, do the excursion. 
You see, this is all nice and smooth. And this is my repair. Uh, the footprint is back on here. So I'm quite happy with this. This is a watertight repair. Uh, and the subscap, if I may just show it again, that's the subscap repair here. No, so I'm not expecting any concern about uh, impingement.